Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to Highland Christian Center. Now, I am Dr. Sean Nalen and you're going to get some deep word because I have two of the most gifted men in the church right here to my right and to my left. I have our executive pastor, Bishop Stuart Miniweather, and to my left I have our operations pastor, Pastor Walter Gett. As you know, we've been talking about the season of giving, and I just want to have a dialogue with these gentlemen because in my sermon series, uh, I didn't really get to finish this. And, and I thought as I move on to the next thing and it's Christmas season and we're talking about Vision Sunday coming up, I thought it would be appropriate to just have these gentlemen help me out, these pastors help me out to unpack and get their thoughts uh, on this thing called the season of giving. So uh, with that, I will just uh, open up in a word of prayer, if you will. Lord, we just thank you for this time of word, and we ask that you would enlighten our hearts. God bless the viewers right now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right. So I, I was talking about the season of giving. You reap what you sow. Um, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 says, but I say this. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Bishop, you have a lot of experience uh, in ministry over the years. Uh, give me your quick synopsis of what does that scripture say to you? What leaps out about it to you? Well, um, the first thing uh, it says to us, given initiates the heart of God mm. because God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son yes and so God wants us to initiate him and imitate him in all of our services mm -hmm. we're never to try to imitate one another but our heart is to imitate God mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when we imitate God there's no limit to our giving amen there's no holding back to our giving. yes you know and that's what I learned as a pastor you know I never forget when God uh, called me the pastor. Mm -hmm. um, we was trying to uh, buy a building, you know. Our first, our second church we were trying to buy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't have all the finances, and God had spoke to me to quit my job to start wow. the church. Yes. And, uh, and so when I, uh, when I quit, I, I was, I had, uh, you know, um, paid into what we call profit sharing. Mm -hmm. And when I quit, they gave me all my funds in profit sharing, so I was wow. able to cash it out. Mm -hmm. And so we needed $5,000 down to buy the church. Yes. So my wife and I, we sat down and we decided this was God's work. Mm -hmm. And so we were going to plant the first seed. Mm -hmm. And from that day forward, I always believed that the leader should be the one who plants the first seed and give in. Mm -hmm. And so we donated $5,000. Wow. To buy, to pay the down on our first church. God has given us more, more beside what we have given. He's blessed you bountifully. Bountifully. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's, that is amazing. And that's what I think our viewers need to know, that it, the Bible is very simple. Uh, Pastor Gant, if you sow sparingly, mm -hmm. you reap sparingly. Right. If you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. Right. How, what jumps out about that for you? Well, uh, what jumps out, Pastor, is that God gave bountifully to us. Yes. As Bishop has said, you know, in giving us Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we as believers, we ought to want to give God our best. Yes. I remember growing up, uh, my sister... She, uh, she had a card, a, a, a Hallmark card, mm. that uh, said that uh, God cared enough to give us his very best. Yes. And so I think we ought to care enough about God mm -hmm. to give our very best as well. Yes. And when we give our very best, yes. God honors that. God knows the resources we have. God knows our heart. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a tremendous amount. That's right. But it has to be given out of a sacrificial oh, offer. Yes. A way in which we're saying, God, this is what I'm offering 
to you mm -hmm. from how you have so bountifully blessed me. Yes. And I think God honors our heart in our giving yes. uh, as well as our intent for giving. Yes. And, uh, and when we give bountifully out of a spirit of gratefulness, mm -hmm. of gratitude, then God, I think, recognizes that seed and then blesses uh, that seed so that it increases in our life as his example of you cannot beat me give. Yes. <laughs> but if you give bountifully, I will show you what bountifully really means. Amen, amen. And I was thinking as you were uh, talking, uh, well, I've talked to one member and I think you were in that conversation where they were saying um, they give 30% of their income to the church. You were right there with me. And, um, and I was saying that according to statistics, only 5% of the church gives a tithe of 10%. And I explained this in detail that the Old Testament tithe, the tithe before the law with Melchizedek, and then how Jesus elaborated on the tithe. And he talked about the weighty of member, weighty of matters of the law, and but how a tithe serves just as uh, the starting, the launching. If you get tied, even though God is not hammering you on the head and saying you're cursed with a curse and all that, that's under the law. We're not under the law, so I can't teach that. But what I can teach is that a tide is God's rubric. It's God's uh, thing that he's put throughout scripture that if you can sacrifice that 10%, it makes a difference. So this person in Highland goes beyond the 10%, they give 30%. And I was looking at the statistics and that of the 5% in the American church that gives a 10%. So all of the shouting, all of the joy, all of the preaching we do, only 5% yeah. give 10%. So I'm going to ask you guys both, what hinders us from doing that, number one? But number two, out of that 5% who give, 75% of them give almost 20%. Like this gentleman mm -hmm. who gives 30%. Right. Isn't that something? Yeah. If you get past this idea that the give up the 10% because it's God's first fruit, then all, and you keep it 90, most people who do that they said, oh, no, I'm going to give God 30, 20. I'm going to give God more because they see the reaping, the benefit, the harvest. So that's my question for you, gentlemen. You each of y'all can go on it. Why is it that preachers teach all of this? We teach this. You've been pastoring. I got a pastor of three, three churches. I got a pastor over here, several churches. Got a pastor here, several churches. What is it that hinders people from tithing today? I know that's a tough question, but I mean, just give it your, your best thoughts. Yeah. Well, you know, when you look at tithe, how tithe first originated, mm -hmm. it was really originated out of the free uh, expression of the heart. Mm -hmm. And when one, um, uh, you know, realized that everything that he possesses uh, belongs to God, then he takes the limit of his giving. Mm. Not only does he give 10%, he give, he go way beyond the 10%. Yes. And that's the way I've always given. I never mm -hmm. I never limit myself to 10%. Yes. You know. And if I had her, then you know, I then I would have thought that well, I would have been cheating God mm -hmm. because God has been so gracious to me. Mm -hmm. But whatever I possessed, I looked at it as, as, as that it belonged to God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See? And that's the way I've dealt with life. Amen. Yeah, that's when I, so uh, just like pastoring all those years, I only had one anniversary. Mm -hmm. One anniversary. And my, my former pastor, he came over for anniversary, he said, uh, uh, I said, you, what do you mean by first anniversary? Mm -hmm. You've been pastor for quite a few years. <laughs> I, said, I said, sir, uh, we're all about giving. Mm -hmm. We gave back to the ministry. Yes. We sold back to the ministry. Mm -hmm. Even even now, in our church that God has blessed us with, uh, every year for the last three or four years, God spoke to me one morning. I was in prayer. He said, "What I want you to do, I want you to give back." Mm -hmm. They have been faithful in giving and giving su and supporting you through the church, and now you're able to do many much for the ministry. Give back to them. Mm. And so. God gave me the wisdom. He says, 
at the last month in the year, you give that year back, give that month back to them. Wow. So every year I text the pastor and say, Brother Pastor, don't forget. Mm -hmm. I said, this is your last month that you owe the give in this year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sow back into you. The, the, so they don't December. have to pay rent no, in for December. the building in December. in December. Wow, that's a blessing, Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. And so what do you think yeah. hinders? Yeah. What do you think? So like Bishop, like me, yeah. I, I, I mean, I give. I don't track everything that I give around the world to missions and to needy kids and families. And we have all these, I get these at the end of the year, they tell me how much I gave, how much I gave, how much I gave. Uh, so I think, like you said, you get in that mindset that it's not limited here. And at Highland, what I did is I just let my money come out in the beginning off the top. And so uh, I've been doing that since I arrived. but. Tell me, what do you think, you know, causes in today's society people to hold on? Well, uh, the, the scripture says that uh, the earth is the Lord's, mm -hmm. the fullness thereof, mm -hmm. the world and they that dwell therein. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure people truly believe that God is in charge of everything. <laughs> All right. Because everything includes mm -hmm. our finances. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, in Hebrews it talks about faith. Yes. Faith is the substance of what things, things hope for, the evidence of things not, not seen. seen. Yes. And so I think we as a culture have become more independent mm. than dependent on God. Oh, right. And so we trust ourselves and our ability yeah. to handle what we can see. What we can see. Because mm -hmm. faith requires you to believe what you cannot see, mm. but that you believe that it will exist mm -hmm. by faith. Mm -hmm. if you trust God. And so I think there's a fundamental issue around just our inability to trust God mm -hmm. more than trusting our own selves, which becomes a major issue, particularly when it comes to money, because money is very personal. Yeah, it's very personal. And because it's so personal yes. to people, yes. then people, when you start talking about church and giving, then uh, it's easy for people to begin making excuses yes. about why they cannot give or should not give a lot. The behavior of the church, the exactly. behavior of the pastor. Sure. They're going to misuse my money. Exactly. I don't know what they're doing That's with right. it over here, That's but right. but I'd rather go spend a hundred yeah. at that restaurant. Well, and I've got, you know, I've got family, <laughs> I've got these other obligations yeah. Yeah. and yes. so forth. And so I think, you know, also it becomes, and as Bishop has alluded to, a, a lifestyle issue. A lifestyle. When you develop a lifestyle Mm -hmm. of trusting God, believing God, giving God the first fruits, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then the the stress of giving is re is reduced and the increase of receiving becomes more of a blessing mm. and an expectation mm -hmm. because we are we've developed a yes. lifestyle of giving and so that's a challenge for a it's, lot of people. It's a well, challenge. You know, believe in the word and trusting God and developing a lifestyle. And I think the money today is an issue in many ways and I, I know Jesus talked about it often. He talked about hell, he talked about money right. and it's right up there in the top three or four. I've done my research over the years sure. how often Jesus has talked about money. Now, he didn't talk about it more than uh, love or things like that, but it's up there. It's up there. The references mm -hmm. to yeah. money are yeah, up he there. Did, he, did. he did talk about it a lot, and he always put it in the, in the and it's almost always in the sense of a warning yeah. of how it lures us. Mm -hmm. The love of money is a root yeah. of all evil. And, and and it's not that money is, it, it, but it's the love of it. It's right. where you put it first and, and they go out the filthy lucre. And I mean, there are scriptures uh, that I had been sharing uh, last week, uh, Luke 12 and 15, for instance, says, be on guard. Right, right. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist mm -hmm. in the abundance of his mm -hmm. possessions. Mm -hmm. But yet the mindset of the world, right. this cosmos, it is it, 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 infused with this idea of materialism and gain. Which makes me think of mm -hmm. this, Pastor. When you, you, I, meant, I think about Matthew 6, 33. Yes. He said, seek, seek ye first the mm -hmm. kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness yes. and all these things will be added unto you. Right. But we have focused on all these things yes. and attaining and acquiring <laughs> all these things yes. rather than seeking God. Seeking and God. so then if you make your focus on attainment, 
it's easier. That's where your energy is going to go. That's where your focus is going to go. That's where your resources are going to go because you want to be able to say, I have achieved or attained this, mm. as opposed to following the scriptural mandate right. to put God first, right. or some would say putting first things first. Putting first things first. You know, God has promised us mm -hmm. his word. If we, whatever we do, like the Bible says, whatever we do, do it as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3. Yeah. Do it mm -hmm. as unto God. If we would practice in obedient, being obedient to God's word, it would automatically bring prosperity. Mm -hmm. It would automatically bring the blessing. Mm -hmm. Like God told, was speaking to Moses as he was talking to the people in Exodus 20 chapter. He said, if you would hearken diligently unto my word mm -hmm. and do those things which I command you, yeah. He said, the blessing, shall, the blessing shall overtake you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You shall be blessed when you go out. You shall be blessed when you come, come in. Mm -hmm. Yes. So even when you go to the store, yes. you're going to be blessed when you go to the store. Right? Yes. Your fruit of your womb is going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you obey. Yes. So, so, you know, the secret is, I would challenge those who are thinking about giving. Give according to God's word. Mm. Give not a, give not grudgingly just because someone asks you mm. come on. for it, but give it because... Because you love God and yes. you want to do something for the kingdom. Yes. That's why you should give. Yes. You know, I learned, I had to learn that the hard way. Yes. You know, I used to, uh, you know, they used to talk about giving you, giving the Lord to bless you. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you done gave all your money to come to pay your bills. You ain't got nothing to pay your bills. <laughs> right. And then you have to go borrow money. Yeah. You know? But Bishop, you said something here yeah. too. Pastor, you yeah. talked about mm -hmm. this a couple of weeks yeah. ago in mm -hmm. your sermon about Abraham and Isaac mm -hmm. and how Abraham was going to actually sacrifice his son yes. and God stepped in and provided the ram in the bush. Yes. But one of the things, and Bishop, you said this, when I think about that, I, I remember that in fact, the obedience actually was really what produced the blessing. Yes. In other words, it's not so much the sacrifice, mm -hmm. but the scripture says mm -hmm. obedience is, is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. You reminded me yeah. that I left that out in the well. sermon. <laughs> I'm gonna say it on air. Pastor G gave me advice. Pastor, you did a great job that God will provide, but you left it. But the obedience, it, well, the, that's, that's what it says in the yes, book of Isaiah. Right, right. mm -hmm. That's what it says yes. in the book of Isaiah. The first time. He said, if you obey, you should eat the good of the Amen. land. Yes. Amen. Yes. But if you refuse, mm -hmm. you're going to get the poor of the That's land. right. And that's what Abraham did. And I did say, and that's why you thought I was going to go there with the scripture, obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But he obeyed, because I emphasize that he obeyed God. Mm -hmm. He worshiped God on the way. We talked about that, Bishop. Mm -hmm. He worshiped God, and then he feared God mm -hmm. because the angel says, we have seen that you fear God. Yeah, Don't do it. Look over there. There's the ram. There's the ram. Yeah. So that, that, so I, I agree with you 100% that that obedience that Abraham showed and he was willing to sacrifice his only son. But as we knew, Abraham already told Isaac when he said, Father, where is the lamb? Yeah. He said, God you will provide, provide yeah. the lamb. That's you right. know, I recall mm -hmm. when... Uh, uh, when things had became a, at a standstill in the church and uh, people had stopped coming and mm. we couldn't raise any funds and uh, uh, so one Sunday I arrived at the church and mm -hmm. God says to me he says uh, I want you to rent the church out mm. I said Lord if I rent the church then what am I going to do and he didn't say nothing he didn't respond the next Sunday morning I arrived at the church heard the same thing I want you to rent the church out. Wow. Now, remind you now, uh, a month before, mm -hmm. a guy had called me and says to me, I heard you're going to rent the church out. I said, who told you that? <laughs> who told you that? And he said, well, take my number down just in case you change your mind. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so when I got halfway downstairs, uh, I, said, I said, okay, all right. You said rent the church out. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I said, as of today, I'm going to get up and tell the church this is the last day the open Bible church will be in in in, in process. Mm -hmm. We are closing the church down. Wow! Just and they thought I thought I had went. Yeah, yeah, because that's like abrupt. That's like. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I said, folks, I said, as of today, this is the last day we'll be having church at the open Bible. You can go where you like to go. 
I said, but as of today, no more open Bible church. Mm -hmm. Wow. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had, I had to sit down and wrote out a list of goals mm -hmm. that I, what I wanted God to do. Mm -hmm. When I obeyed God, yeah. for three years, I, fit, I didn't pass it for three years, mm -hmm. I was obeying God. Right. And when God got ready for me to go, he says, now it's time to go back home. Mm -hmm. I wrote the pastor a letter that was written, that written to church too and said, sir, um, uh, we are thinking about coming to our church, coming back to our church next month, so you have to find another place for you to continue. 30-day notice, Bishop. You weren't messing yeah, yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, I went back. I obeyed God, and I went back, and i never forget that it was, it was real funny. You know, I was outside cleaning around the church, and the guy walked up. He was, he was running for an, uh, a public um, office. Yeah. You know? And so he said, sir. He said, I'd like to come over and talk to your people. I said, sir, I don't have no people. <laughs> he looked at me. But within a month's time, God had gave me people. Amen. Come on. Amen. And so, and within, within <laughs> three months, God had blessed us with new, suit, new seats in the sanctuary. Mm. He had blessed us to paint the church. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and then he blessed us to pay the church off. Amen. Wow. Every goal yeah. that was on that list, I went down and checked it out. Yeah. Wow. Amen. And the only one was left was training. Amen. That was not to be an end. That was to be a continuation. Right. Isn't that something? By obeying By God. God. Well, and it, it also, again, it, what keeps going back to me around this topic of giving, giving. is this uh, aspect of faith. I remember a book I read called The Mustard Seed Conspiracy by Tom Sines some years mm. ago. And... Hmm. In that book, essentially, the message is it only requires a mustard seed, yes. off, a small mm -hmm. portion. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, Pastor, if folks you just get in their mind, mm -hmm. they, they don't have to start off big. Big, no. But start off asking God just for God, give me a little faith yes. to be able to give what I can. And then yes. look for God to increase and to water and to bring forth the fruit of that seed. That's right. And when you see that God has done his part, mm. then you will be encouraged in your spirit to give more That's right. and to believe more. Right. And your faith will also increase. But just start out with that mustard just seed. Just start off, set it, yeah. and I'm going to read the scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. You both have already touched on it, which would have been my second point in my sermon a part two but each let each one give just as he has purposed amen in his heart That's right. not grudgingly mm -hmm. or under compulsion mm -hmm. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. But that's exactly what we kind of yeah, do right. in churches. I hate to say yeah. compulsion, yeah. compel. You got to give. And if you give this money into my pockets, you will get a double portion. I've seen all of it. And, and I've seen uh, pastors pull back the lever as if God was a slot machine. And yeah. Yeah. money coming to me and 5,000 people at one time pulling the lever. Right. I mean, this... And so running through the money, running. And, and so I don't think that lines up with this. Mm -hmm. Let each one give just as he purposed in his heart. So this is about giving from the heart. Go ahead, Bishop. You know, um, what I believe one of the things that really hinders people from giving today, mm -hmm. um, be, they have been beaten down so mm -hmm. much about the curse of the tide. That's right. Many of them have paid, start paying tithes, but they haven't been able to continue in paying tithes. Mm -hmm. So now, where they are now? They're condemned. Mm. They come to church, they feel like God doesn't curse them, God doesn't condemn them. Right. Because they're not able to keep the tithes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I felt the same way. Mm -hmm. i never forget one Saturday night, I was getting ready to, getting ready to go to church that Sunday morning, mm. and I was just climbing in the bathtub. I said, oh God. I said, I'm behind on my tithes. Mm. I would love to catch up on my tithes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And God spoke back to me. He says, stop where you are. Mm -hmm. Remind you now, I had always dreamed of get paying a, of getting a car without any money down. Yes. I had an old sable. That car didn't like me. <laughs> Every time I get in it, it'll go dead. 
my wife get in, she would drive and have fun with it. <laughs> but when I got in, in it, it would stop running. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had, I had, I, I became disgusted with it. Mm -hmm. I took it to the shop, and I, when the guy, I had paid the guy the money, and I drove it off a lot, just went dead. So I got out of the car, I went and got the balls, and I said, sir, you supposed to fix this car. So I went into the showroom, the guy said, hollered at me, hey, how was I could buy this thunder, new Thunderbird? I said, man, I said, I read down, I don't have nothing to do with the car. Right. right. He said, hey, how much you paying for the car you got? I told him, I said, man, a certain, certain. He said, I get your new car for that. I said, really? Mm -hmm. I said, if you get your new car for that, I said, you come talk to him. We can sit down and talk about right. it. Right. Within, within an hour and so, I had a brand new car. Mm -hmm. I, I gave him a check for $400. Mm -hmm. Next two weeks and a half, I received the check back. Mm. Ford sent me back, sent me back the check. And from that time forth, I, the Lord blessed me to get a car without paying anything down. Mm. Wow. Amen. Only because I accepted God's principle. Mm -hmm. See, God knew the heart. And right now, those of you who are sitting there, God knows your heart. God knows your heart. God knows your heart. And, and stop letting the enemy condemn you. Yes. See, make up your minds as after the day you're going to start where you are. Yes. You're going to give. You're not going to limit yourself in giving. Mm -hmm. You're going to give as God bless you to give. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just think about the 10%. Mm -hmm. But look at it from this point of view. Everything you possess, how did you get it? Mm -hmm. God gave it to you. Right. So just, just don't limit yourself at 10%, but just say as of today, I'm going to give according to as God leads me to give. If he tells me to give $1,000 or $2,000, I'm going to give it. Right. Yeah. But I'm going to give it because I love him mm -hmm. and because I, I, I want to invest in his ministry. Yes. See, and, and that's how you and I should learn how to give. You, you're giving into God's ministry. You're investing in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you'll never lose by investing in the kingdom. Amen. Yes. You'll never lose. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. And I really do think that, and I know our time is almost up, because um, we want to keep this right around 30 minutes so our viewers can look at this and review it. Um, so that tithing, we don't condemn here at Highland. You never hear me preach. You know, we're under the tithing law because I know enough that we can't even follow the law of tithing, uh, which were three tithes. Uh, and I've told that the tithing to the poor, the tithing to the priest and the house of God, and then the tithing for the annual convocation. That's 30 percent. But we don't teach that. And then if you don't tithe, you 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 then had a 20 percent. If you messed up your tithe, you had a 20 percent taxation on top of, of that. And so we don't go there, but we want you to give from your heart, as Bishop has said, as Pastor Gant has said. In fact, Matthew 6, 21 says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so if our treasure is on the kingdom, that's where our heart is. Then we want to see the kingdom of God grow. We have the Burnside feed. We have the youth ministry of communications. We have the women, the men. We, we are. Highland is seen because of the great work and because of your giving. Highland is seen as a benchmark church. It is seen as a light on the hill. But the way to sustain our great church and improve it in the physical uh, realm is to continue in that giving, to increase, in fact, in our giving. Okay, so I'm going to go down here. Because the Bible is clear that we should not store up our treasures on earth and where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal Matthew 6 again and 19 and 20b. But store for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy. And so this attitude of giving to God from the heart and saying, Lord, I'm not worried about my earthly gain as much as your kingdom gain. But God has a principle. And this is what I want to wrap it up with is that even though our hearts should be on heavenly things, God says he will abundantly bless us because we're honoring his word. And this is what he said. I input this before, mm -hmm. you, before you wind it up. This last scripture, yes. You remember, you remember where um, God told Moses to tell the people going back to Deuteronomy 28. Mm-hmm. 
you know, you hear so much teaching. Um, you can lay in that bar. Mm -hmm. you, God Become can take you out of debt. Yes. That's a dream. Mm -hmm. That's what most people dream mm -hmm. someday that they can live without debt. Mm -hmm. They dream that. Yes. But they think it's, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. But by being obedient to God, right. God can allow you to live in that, in, in that level, at that level where you don't have to borrow, mm -hmm. you can lend. Right? Yes. God said he'll make you the head and not the tail. Mm -hmm. God said he'll take you off the bottom and put you on the top. Right? Yes. Only if you and I will just hearken to his voice and just give as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. don't, don't erase that idea out of your mind, that image out of your mind, you're making preachers rich. Mm. Because you can't make a preacher rich. Because when he serves God, he's God's gonna make him rich. <laughs> yes. God's gonna bless him. Yes. But many people won't give mm -hmm. because they look at the preacher riding around a fine car. They say, "Oh, look at him! He's taking all the church money and buying mm -hmm. the car." We come dressed out with a different suit every Sunday. Oh, look at him! He's taking our money and buying all those suits and so forth. But erase that from your mind mm -hmm. and know that when you give. You're giving as unto the Lord. Yes. And God is going to give back to you. Amen. And then, you know, I think of when Paul mentioned to Timothy, uh, he told him that God has not given us a spirit of fear, fear. but of power, power, of love, mm -hmm. and a sound mind. And I think fear mm -hmm. is an issue that some people mm -hmm. have to overcome That's right. in yeah. terms of really empowering and employing Amen. their faith mm -hmm. and really examining our hearts and saying, God, help me yes. to overcome this fear yes. of trusting you right. and trusting your word Amen. so that when I step out mm -hmm. on faith, yes. I'm stepping out on solid ground yes. just as sure as I am stepping on a piece of concrete on a sidewalk. Hallelujah. I can believe God's yes. word mm -hmm. is strong is, is firm, and then it will bring forth what it says it's going to do. And I think we have to, Pastor, if, you know, if we get to that point That's to overcome, to overcome our fear. fear and say, God, I'm going to test you, mm -hmm. I'm going to prove your word, that you can do yes. exactly what you said you're going yes. to do for me, and I'm believing that by faith, by faith. and claiming it according to your word, yes. and watch God bless you. And yeah. watch God do it. And, yeah. and that is that last scripture, and that God will bless us abundantly. Uh, and it says this, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. I just like the word. And God is able, God is able. to bless you abundantly Amen. so that in all things at all times, nice. having all that you need, yes. you will abound in every good Amen. work. That's and good. see, don't leave that off. That when God blesses you, it is to do good work. Good. It is to do righteousness. It is to expand his kingdom. And so I love how God says when we sow into his work, yeah. when we sow into his kingdom and bless, he will bless us abundantly Amen. so we can do more Amen. to the spreading of his kingdom. Amen. In fact... Um, this is what it, it, God loves the cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. When you look at this grace cycle of giving, it says this, um, in 2 Corinthians 9 and 11, we give to God, okay, and then God's grace abounds. Mm -hmm. And then we give to God more because of his grace. Amen. And then God blesses us in verse 10 and 11 even more. And then the results, God's people's and his, his needs, God's people's needs are met. And then God is glorified mm -hmm. and the giver is appreciated and the Bible says in verse 14, it's prayed for. Mm -hmm. So I call this the grace cycle. It's a giving cycle. Mm -hmm. The more we give to God, the more he gives back to The God. more he gives back to us. And the more he gives back to us, the more we give. The more we give. And we bless yeah. the kingdom of God in his righteousness. But I like the yeah. emphasis on faith. I like the emphasis on obedience and how we just trust God, but not in a condemnation way. I like what you said, Bishop, about how we should not be condemning. Oh, if I if I only gave seven percent, or if I only gave five, God is gonna be no, give from your heart. 
make a plan before you come to church to know what you're going to give online and there. And I love what Pastor Gant is saying as well about the faith yeah. that it's all about faith yeah. in giving. Yeah. Well, because that faith mm -hmm. then generates God's mathematics. Yes. Faith generates addition. Mm. God will add. And mm. then as we continue to believe God, the addition mm. turns into multiplication. multiplication. <laughs> and so God continues to yes. increase and yes. exponentially yes. as our faith yes. increases and God increases in, in, in us, the blessing in us also increases. Yes. So, you know, it's, it all it I, goes all yeah. back to that foundation. That foundation. And like I said in, in the sermon a couple of weeks ago, yeah. when I was a child, I thought like a child. <laughs> now I'm an adult. I'm thinking like an adult. Yeah. But I, I'm mature saying to God. But I thought, Bishop, if I could just get the $50,000. But that was in my my fleshly thinking that, oh, my. But God has blessed me abundantly many times, many times beyond that. And, and the reason is, is because I've always been a giver. My mom says, you've always been a giver. You would give cards around as a kid. Madeline says, you're going to give everything away. I got to watch you. Because you're giving away things. You're giving away cards. I've given away three cards. Mm -hmm. Giving them away. Mm -hmm. And and But you know what? I've given away when people say they're going to pay me back and they never pay me mm -hmm. back. But I, I, I forgave them. I said to my relative, and God has blessed you. Oh, He's blessed me abundantly, mm -hmm. and, he, and and you because it's from the heart. That's right. And you say, I just so here it is. When the widow might, when is our close on that story? Mm -hmm. The widows, I want you both to give us quick your understanding of that. So Jesus interjected Himself mm -hmm. with the widow's might. It was. That widow Mike wasn't bothering anybody. The widow wasn't bothering anybody. Sure. The Pharisees weren't bothering anybody. It was Jesus who looked over and said, I tell you mm -hmm. the truth. This poor widow mm -hmm. has put more into the treasury than all the others. Mm -hmm. They all gave out of their wealth, mm -hmm. but she gave out of her poverty, mm -hmm. put in everything, mm -hmm. all she had to live on. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's kind of what you've been saying. The heart. Yeah. Because God saw the heart. Yeah. It's not in how much, mm -hmm. but it's the heart. It's the heart. And if you give with the right heart, mm -hmm. God will bless us abundantly. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts on the widow and the might and how God wants us to give? I'll give you both the last words and then we'll wrap it up. You know, I'm going back again, you know, you quoted the scripture. Mm hmm. God is able to make all grace abound to all of us. Yes. We may, um, you know, be successful and be able to be a blessing to every good work that God brings us into mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And when you give, you give because you love God. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're not giving for God to give back to you. That's right. But you're giving because you love God. Mm -hmm. Looking for nothing in return. Mm -hmm. you just want to give. Love, look for no return. Mm -hmm. Love gives. But when you love, when love gives, love always have an automatic return. Yes. Always have a response. That's mm -hmm. why that's no that's why nobody can really define love. Mm -hmm. Because when you think you got love figured out, love takes another look takes another turn. <laughs> yes. You know? And that's where God is. Yes. So when we trust him with all of our heart. And, and just give into his kingdom work, we know that he's going to remember our heart toward him. Yes. Like the Bible said, when we do things in the name of the Lord, God never forget any good thing that we do toward this name, Satan. Mm -hmm. Maybe Amen. little, maybe small. See? But remember, it's not how much you give. Mm -hmm. It's the heart of which you give. That you get. Oh, say it again. Say it one more time. Say it, Bishop. It's not how much, much you, you give, give, but it's just the heart, heart through which you give. It. To, it's the heart through which you give. Yeah. Which yeah. you give. It. Wow. So All don't right. feel condemned yeah. if somebody pulled out a hundred dollar bill side of you and, mm. and giving an offering. Yes. You may not have but two dollars, but give that two dollars from your heart. Mm -hmm. And in God's sight, you gave more than the person who gave the one hundred dollars. That's right. If the heart, the heart, and you gave out of your poverty. Yes. You gave, yes. Gave. Yeah. And I just want to say, finally, that we've been talking a lot about the heart. And I would encourage our listeners to allow God and encourage God to speak to your heart mm. 
and then to listen and obey. Obey and act on faith and in faith. faith. That's right. <laughs> and there's no other way. No other way to be happy mm -hmm. in Jesus, Jesus than to <laughs> trust and and obey. Come on. Amen. Amen. I love it. Well, look, this has been great to have these great minds who are pastors, senior pastors, been through the same cycles of, of, of churches and seen giving across this great land. But I want you to know that I want to, first of all, on behalf of all of us, we want to thank you because you are givers. Man. And in fact, some of you who are looking right now have the gift of giving. We didn't talk about that today. These were just, they give way above. Well, you the, talk about it. You're I, just yourself. Yeah. You, you, you got I, 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 I've been accused of having a gift <laughs> of giving where I just give up everything. But you know what? You know what? It's because I'm blessed. And I, you know, and I know if I hoarded my money a little better, <laughs> I could have a lot more. But I, I give away because God has commanded me to do so. Amen. And he, he's in my heart. And I just want to see his kingdom spread and people blessed. But here's the last thing I will say to you is that this week is Vision Sunday. So I don't know when you're viewing this right now, but it's Vision Sunday, the 10th of December. So whatever you purpose in your heart, if you cannot, as Bishop has so eloquently stated, if you cannot make that hundred, do whatever God puts in your heart. Make a contribution. Say, Lord, I just want to contribute because I believe in the vision of Highland. I believe what Highland is doing for the community. And that's it. And, and, and as Pastor Gant kept reminding us, faith, faith, faith in your giving mm -hmm. will make such a difference. It really will. Well, thank you. This has been great. Thank you for helping me unpack the rest of my sermon. Uh, I may have to do a triple sermon, tag team preaching, all three of us on the stage at the same time. We may do this one time. And I'm, I'm joking about it, but like have a, uh, and I see my producer in the back nodding his head saying yes, like we get a, 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 a you know, three chairs. Mm -hmm. And we talk, we just talk to the word for 35, 40 minutes. Amen. We might do that on a, on a Sunday. We got to mix it up a little bit. Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to Highland Christian Center, where we always say you're in the right place, where we are building community and changing, changing lives. lives. See you next time. Amen. Yeah. Well, you know what we used to do then, our young.